Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today we're going to be taking a look at a few rotorcraft designs that I've been working on over the past few weeks. Some of these craft are essentially complete, whereas a few others are still work in progress, but I'll do my best to make sure that download links for all of these craft are available in the description. So to start off, let's take a look at the Dragonfly. This is a single seat helicopter built mainly for use on other planets that have an atmosphere similar to Kerbin. The Dragonfly uses two fans with contra-rotating rotors, using R12 ducted fan blades, and being powered by EM19S light motors. While providing all of the lift for the craft, these also provide most of the controllability for pitch and roll, with your being controlled with a small gyro. A benefit of having these fans either side of the fuselage is that an ejection seat can be used without the risk of hitting any blades. The ejection seat sequence is started with the abort action group, which opens the canopy, releases the ejection seat from the craft, and fires two small separatrons which propel the seat away from the craft. This is certainly a system that will come in handy if you want to get away in a hurry. Another feature that bears mentioning is actually the custom canopy design of the Dragonfly. It's made with some custom flags and some small robotics parts, and then of course having the pilot sitting on a command seat. This really helps to save weight, and it also gets the look that I was going for, especially with the canopy opening and closing, which isn't something you have with the standard cockpits in-game. A few other minor features are some lights for night flying, these are mounted on the fronts of the two fans, and also a small solar panel between the two fans that allows for the batteries to be recharged after a bit of flying. And while the Dragonfly is by no means fast, it is actually a very agile and very stable helicopter thanks to its light weight of only 2.9 tons. In the future, I actually plan to put a grabbing unit on the underside of the fuselage so that I can use it to carry stuff around. As I mentioned, it's designed mainly to be used on other planets, so the idea would be that I can use this to transport rovers and other things around bases on those planets. Overall, this is probably one of my favourite vehicles to fly around the Kerbal Space Center with, thanks to its very forgiving flight characteristics and compact design. So now on to our next rotorcraft, this is the Zuma, although personally I've taken to calling it the electric chair due to the amount of kerbals that have been dusted while flying it. Originally this was built for the same role as the Dragonfly, it's very light, not exactly the most practical or safest vehicle I've built thus far, but it, the point is that it's a light vehicle designed to go to other planets and just transport kerbals to and from where they need to be. It's powered by a single EM16S motor with six R62 fan blades. The Zuma, it just really takes Kerbals from A to B at the Kerbal Space Center at this point, as I have better vehicles to use on other planets. And thanks to its small profile, it can land almost anywhere. And while being fast and fairly agile, which certainly are good traits, it does have quite a few rather concerning flaws. Firstly, due to the single fan, it will experience a fair amount of torque. Its control gyro can usually offset this, but this can be a problem from time to time. Escaping the Zuma during an emergency basically boils down to jumping off and hoping for the best. And of course, Kerbals do have personal parachutes, but sometimes that can be too little too late. Another thing that you no doubt noticed is that the Kerbal is just sitting on top of the vehicle out in the open. So sometimes the pilot can just get knocked off the vehicle, which is understandably inconvenient. So now moving on to something a little bit bigger and just a little bit safer, this is the Hornet. Mainly inspired by the gunship helicopter from the movie Avatar, this is planned to eventually have weapons, although every weapon that I have made so far either just doesn't work or is too heavy. Weapons aside though, this thing is basically a big version of the Dragonfly that we looked at previously. Custom canopy design, ejection seats for the crew members, and two main fans with contra-rotating rotors. The rotors though upgrade to EM32S motors and Type B propeller blades, which provide the power necessary to lift this 7.2 ton vehicle. The fans can also be tilted forward and backwards to provide additional pitching control when in flight. 
Despite being very similar to the Dragonfly, the Hornet does also have a few distinguishing features. Firstly, a tail rotor, which serves a primary function of providing additional yaw control to the vehicle, although the Hornet can actually continue to fly without this tail rotor if it needs to save power. Another way that the Hornet differs from the Dragonfly is the ability to pitch those lifting fans. As well as providing additional pitch control, this also allows for the center of lift to be slightly moved to line it up with the center of mass, which may change due to weapons being added to the vehicle. Another change that is slightly more difficult to spot is actually with the separatrons on the ejection seats. The angles of the separatrons have been slightly changed to ensure that the two pilots don't crash into each other when they eject from the vehicle. Overall, the Hornet is quite a nice helicopter just to fly around the Kerbal Space Center. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger than the Dragonfly, but it also maintains a good level of stability and agility while also being considerably faster. I am hoping that this will prove to be a nice weapons platform once I can actually create some working missiles. So now onto the final rotorcraft for this video. This is the Flea, a 0.9 ton ducted fan craft using two EM16S motors with R62 fan blades to provide the lift and then a pair of gyros for control. While weighing a bit more than the Zuma that we looked at earlier, it's still light enough to serve as a Kerbal transport both on Kerbin and on other planets. It has seating for a single Kerbal but can also be flown without a pilot thanks to its probe core, meaning that it can be flown autonomously to pick up a stranded Kerbinaut. Obviously being electric due to the motors, the vehicle will need to be recharged, and this is done via two solar panels mounted near the back of the fuselage. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to recharge in game time, although of course you can just do some time warping and make it recharge essentially straight away. While being small and light, the flea, being controlled by gyros, is highly agile, making it quite fun just to zoom around the KSC with. It's also notable that while lacking an ejection seat, the vehicle is considerably more stable than the Zuma that I showed previously, so the lack of an ejection seat is not nearly as much of a drawback. The Flea and the Dragonfly are my two most recent rotorcraft designs, and are certainly the two that I enjoy flying the most, thanks to their good stability and agility. Neither of them are that fast compared to some of the bigger rotorcraft that I have, but they are certainly the most fun. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be putting the Kerbal X pages for these craft in the description, although do keep in mind that some of these will require custom flags to look as they do in this video, so I will also make those flags available in the description. Well, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, which hopefully you did, please consider dropping a like on the video, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you wish to see more content like this in the future. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.